Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Hi oh, hi oh. Ooh, I just did the drive. Jared, you thought it would be a good idea to, to drive from Savannah to Philadelphia in a Winnebago. Yes, it was. It was great. <laughs> we we packed all the orange juice we needed. There's no way you just did you did that in a day, right? Now we left last night. Thir- what was that? 13, 16 hours? I don't know. It's a lot. I wasn't driving the Winnebago. It's a lot. All I know is this. We're coming to Philadelphia for the Army-Navy game. We've got one of the most important guests on in the history of our show. And you're in a Winnebago, Jared. Who do we have? Introduce our guest. I, 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 what, what do you mean? I can't be in a Winnebago. I can't arrive in a Winnebago. Would no. You, would you prefer that I came in a Chevy Sprint? Yes, something. Yeah, absolutely. A, a I would, Volt actually. Or a did plane? I need to, did I need to arrive in a Vault? A plane? Well, like he us? is from Seattle. They like environmentally conscious vehicles there. I like a fucking Sebring. A no Chrysler, top. Chrysler <laughs> Sebring, no top. You know, I did I did a stint in Vegas with one of those, and I stopped at a stoplight right next to uh, uh, the lead singer of... Uh, he says, I, you're going to fucking smack me in the face for this. Come on. Um... I don't want to close my eyes. Really? Yeah. He was I in don't want to fall asleep. Steven Tyler. He was in a you, purple baby. Lamborghini yes. with the two. of Aerosmith. Steven Tyler. Yes, yes. He had two women in the passenger seat in a purple Lamborghini. I had a Chrysler Sebring with the top down, and I just revved on him. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know who Steven Tyler no, was? No, I know. I just couldn't think of his name <laughs> right now. I know exactly who it was. He's, Lips were protruding out of the fucking yeah, Lamborghini. He and Julia Roberts are definitely related. Oh yeah, massive, massive. Bass Introduce lips. our guests for the for the audience. Uh, this is Mr. Florent Groberg, Captain retired. Yes, that's right. Do that's you, what I'm talking but, about. But, but here's here's the thing. When you when you announce his name, do you put Medal of Honor recipient before it? No, it doesn't. Fuck no. Ever? No. Nah. Captain I, retired Florent Grober. Really? Yeah. So us civilians, we put importance on that where it's just like, hey, man, we have a Medal of Honor recipient on the show today. You don't do that in real life. No. It's, it's amazing. Kind of, it's funny. At work the other day, I worked for Boeing. Yeah. This gentleman, I'm, I'm literally getting coffee, and he, he says, oh, you're our Medal of Honor recipient. I'm like, no, I'm, your, I'm the chief of staff. You know, and he's like, oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah. But you're still a Medal of Honor recipient. I'm like, no, yeah, I am. But I'm a chief of staff. I'm a civilian. I, I ain't yours. <laughs> <laughs> I sure shit ain't yours. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you know, he, he was he was awesome. You know, he was he was a former Navy guy. So I felt sorry for him for that yeah. part. But, you know, it was, it was a big, big thing for him. And I'm just kind of thinking, I'm like, I, don't, I never think about the Medal of Honor recipient piece because it's surreal, you know, to think about the fact that you're a part of this society that when I served was just a myth. Sure. Right? You know, Audie Murphy type, right? And you're like, yeah. yeah. And then one day you're a male of Iron City, you look yourself in your mirror, you're like, man, I'm still ugly. <laughs> it doesn't make you I prettier. I do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what? But you didn't win a Medal of Honor. No, I didn't. There's, a, there's <laughs> a, by, by the way, it doesn't I'll, matter. There's not enough awards in the military for Jared to win that he's going to stop eating gas station hot dogs. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I had I had two rib sandwiches God last damn night it, dude. from the gas station. Did God you really? I had two it. hot dogs today, oh. and I had two cheeseburgers. God damn it. This is a, a, a rib recipient he's about I'm, to get. You're going to blow out the Did you eat a full 24 hours of meals from a gas station? Yeah. So forgive me. For, uh, for us civilians at home, which is why we started this podcast together, because these guys know your story. Right. A lot of the people at home don't know your story. Yeah. Would you mind sharing of, of, of how... One even encounter something like this to where you're nominated for an award as prestigious as that. No, it's it's you know my entire life has been it's been a blessing, right? Like I was adopted. Uh, I had a great great man named Larry Groberg who you know from Gary, Indiana of all places, uh, Swedish background. So it was always interesting, you know, growing up when I brought him over. I was like, yeah, that's my dad. And they look at me, they're like, bro, this guy is blonde with green eyes. He's like six two. What the hell happened there? <laughs> and you say that's your dad. Yeah. But what what really guided me in the military is the fact that I have I 
my family and my mom's side is Algerian. And my uncle was killed by a terrorist organization called the GIA back in 1996. Oh, yeah. When I was 12 yep. years old. Uh, he was shot, beheaded, dismembered, and put in a box and sent uh, back to my grandfather as a, as a testament. As a testament that, you know, we're, this, is our, this is our new way of life. You fast forward a couple years later. Things I'm, are very privileged here in the United States. Uh, like Jared says this all the time, we've never been invaded. In, our, yeah. in, in modern America, like yeah. we have no idea what it's about to be at war at home. No, no one knows what it's like here. I'll tell you what, man. It, it was he was my first like great example of like ultimate sacrifice. You know, he put his life on the line and and he died. You know, he died for his belief. He died for his family, for his country. Now, fast forward a couple years later, here I am, a naturalized citizen. You know, in this country, on February 2001. A couple months later, 9/11. I'm like the same assholes that went out there and killed my uncle, terrorized my family, are not terrorizing my adoptive country. So I got to be part of the solution. Uh, I went to school, joined the army, had a couple, you know, a couple of deployments. But on August 8, 2012, I had the honor and privilege to serve as a, a, the PSD, you know, uh, lead officer for Colonel Mingus, now the 82nd uh, Division Commander. And we were targeted by two suicide bombers. So when people ask, like, oh, how'd you get the medal? Or, like, what were you thinking when you, you know, when you asked for the medal? It's simple. You know, just every day that I had the opportunity to wear a uniform, I understood that it was an honor and a privilege. I also understood that when I raised my right hand and took that oath, that meant that I would put my life on the line for my brothers and sisters, day in, day out, night in, night out. And when I did, we were targeted by two suicide bombers. I was the closest to the first suicide bomber. And so I couldn't see a weapon. So the only thing I could think of was, like, man, I don't like this guy, so I'm gonna go at him. That's I call it, I call it the who dies first guy. Like when I'm walking in a patrol or on or like mounted up, I'm like, I'm gonna find the who dies first guy. That's the guy that looks out of place. There's something wrong with that guy. And if yeah. anything happens, I'm gonna shoot that motherfucker first. Yeah, was that what was going through your head? It's it's always what's going through your head. Well, in this case, it was it was they did it was an ambush. So they came yeah. at us with a distraction with two motorcycles. Uh. And I put that day, Afghan National Army with us. I put them up front because I didn't trust them. And when I saw the two motorcycles coming that fast, I was like, man, this is not good, right? Every, all your spidey senses kick up. And I looked to my left. I saw my platoon sergeant actually turn around. And I was trying to make eye contact with him. And he was not looking at me. He started looking to my left. So I, just, so I looked to my left, and I saw this Kiai out of nowhere. He came out of a, this building. And I was like, damn. Yeah, out of place, yeah. 100%. So I went at him. I didn't see a weapon, so I couldn't shoot him. I didn't want to end up on CNN and then, you know, on Leavenworth. Sure. So I just kind of did my own escalation of force. I screamed. I, I, I ran towards the screaming at him. No response. Hit him with my rifle. Crossed the chest. When I am across the chest, I felt that he had something. So I let go of my rifle. I just slunk to my kit. And I grabbed him. When I grabbed him, I was like, shit, he's got a vest on. And so the only thing that crossed my mind was like, dude, I got to get him away from everyone as quickly as possible and as far away as possible. And that's what I did. And I had Mahoney uh, you know, follow me, my, my, my radio guy. And I threw him to the ground. Mahoney tried to finish him off down on the ground, and he detonated at my feet. Holy shit. Yeah. So what happened when he detonated? I blacked out. He threw me 20 feet. You know, I woke up. Probably, I don't know, a minute, two minutes later, I had my foot facing me. My fibula was sticking out, blood everywhere. You know, my head was just, like, spinning. And it was just dusty and all that stuff. So you kind of wake up. You're like, shit, like, what just happened? I stepped on IED or whatever it was. So the only thing I could think of was, like, let me find. I, I was looking for my rifle. Couldn't find my rifle. So I took my pistol, you know, make sure I had a round in the chamber. Then I looked at my leg. I was like, that's not good. And look, I'm a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> paper cuts. I complain about paper cuts. So when your foot's <laughs> facing you and your stiff fibula is out, I'm like, oh, my God. But I couldn't feel anything. Was shot, you know, and I was just like, "Oh my God, this is suck. This is, this is. I don't have much time, but man, this is great." So I started dragging myself out. I'm a dumbass. I didn't put a tourniquet on myself, right? I almost died from bleeding out. But where, the, where were you bleeding from? So it was from my lower left leg, below the knee. So I had blood everywhere. I had actually blood everywhere on me because I didn't. Later on, if it found out, I had little pieces of bones all over my body, and I was from the suicide bomber, from that guy, and I had Holy his blood shit. all over me. So I was covered in blood. <laughs> but I lived, man. What was crazy is they put me in a ditch. My my medic saw him Balderrama. I mean, specialist Balderrama put a tourniquet on, saved my life in essence. And I asked for a status report, and that's when they told me 
that the guy was protecting Mount War Six, Mingus was alive, but they said Mount War Seven, our command sergeant major, was killed. And he's like, Major Gray, Major Kennedy, and uh, Reggie Alba Fata also have been killed, sir. And it took me forever to figure out how is that even possible? How, how did I live? Yeah. How can a guy blow up at my feet and I live? As you're tackling him. As yeah, and then and then guys that were 20 feet away died. Ball bearings. Really? When he hit the ground, he hit chest first. Uh -huh. So the ground actually took the impact of the bomb, and his body was kind of like jumping on a grenade. So his body also almost saved my life. Holy shit. But the problem is that the ball bearings went a certain way, and uh, they went in the direction of those four incredible individuals, and that fucked me up for a long time. Well, the weirdest thing is, like, you ran up the stairs. We had shots earlier. It, it seems like physically nothing is wrong with you. How is your body today after all of that? So it's so interesting. It's just like it's it's almost it's perception, right? Uh, I'm missing half my calf on my on my uh, left lower left side. I'm definitely you are. Yeah. 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 You sprinted up the stairs faster than Jared today. Well, I mean, I didn't have two hot well. dogs, two cheeseburgers, and uh, <laughs> a couple orange juice. You know, I mean, actually, actually, we had a couple orange juice. No, it's um. I, uh, just like anything I've ever treated in my life, when I'm committed to something, I put everything into it. So I took physical therapy very seriously. I uh, Walter Reed. Uh, we have some incredible, incredible folks out there, doctors, nurses, you know, physical therapists. And uh, it, it took years of rehab. I was in the hospital two and a half years. Holy shit. And uh, I, was, I, I was friends with David Gray. Yeah. The guy that was killed. And, and, and we did uh, Range 15 at Walter Reed. Like, it's an amazing place. I mean, truly amazing. Yeah. What's the process of, hey, you're going to Walter Reed versus anywhere else? When do you come back? I think it's, it's split up by regions, really, where you're based out of. Because you, I, for me, I almost went to Bamsey. Bamsey, yeah. Yeah, because I was out of Colorado. But the reason why, it was a nightmare. Um, uh, actually, Admiral McRaven is the one that like forced this colonel at, at Andrews Air Force Base not to put me in Bamsey because my family is from you know, on the East Coast. Sure. So we wanted to be at Walter Reed. They were yeah. sending me to Bamsey based on that the region of where you're, you're stationed at. So I was at Walter, I ended up at Walter Reed. Ma'am. So when do you get the call then of like, hey, you're nominated for a Medal of Honor? This is a, it's a funny story, man. Well, it, well are you they still throw the a placeholder award first. What was your first one? A silver star? No. A cross? Nothing. You had nothing? No. I was out of the army. Oh, wow. So they put me in for the Distinguished Service Cross? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But three years later, not a call, nothing. Someone said, oh, yeah, you know, they, they were looking at you to get the Medal of Honor. Someone said that to me. But I think it got shut down. So I just figured that it was typical Army, and they yeah. just they lost. Am I good? No, you're good. Yeah, keep right. going. They lost, they lost the paperwork. The loss is you know, and so I figured like, well, fuck it, it doesn't matter, right? I never, I never, not one day in my life did I ever, you know, put that uniform hoping to get a medal. No, you know, you serve your country because you want to serve your country, you want to serve your brothers and sisters, you want to protect everything that is being an American today, right? And you want to go out there and freaking find those assholes that want to terrorize us, that want to change our way of life, and you want to let them know one thing: that is, you're not gonna fucking impact my life. I will destroy you before you come to my homeland and you fucking try to terrorize us. They tried it in 9-11 and they started the goddamn response. Changed yeah. the whole world. Why? Because you united an entire country. You woke up the sleeping giant again just like the Japanese did yeah. you know, in Pearl Harbor. And so, to me it was just, you know, that decision, but you know, thinking about fuck, I just lost my train of thought. No, no, <laughs> not at all, man. Not at all. I mean, look, with somebody who's, you know, no, it's, it's, yeah, you're, you, you're passionate you never about it. Yeah. To get an award, so you had silence for three years. And well, then how, how many guys have grabbed a dude they thought had an S vest on and laid down on him and nothing happened? You know what I mean? Like hundreds, probably. But the reality of this whole thing, man, but is you just have like, to do that thing. But you do like, your job. It right? doesn't. It doesn't matter about the medal. It's about doing that job. And if it happens, it happens. So, like, to me, it was like, all I wanted to do, on, I, so now I remember, all I wanted to do was I wanted to get out of Walter Reed. I wanted to move on my life. I really wanted to put August 8, 2012 behind me. You know, I was just, like, emotionally, you know, drained 
by having to always like think about it, talk about it, uh, uh, be around it, be it, because it, it, it will forever be associated with me. But I had an awesome opportunity, right? I went with DIA, uh, Defense Intelligence Agency. They recruited me. I went over there, worked as an intelligence officer. Uh, I worked with people like, you know, Matt, Matt's previous job, and he was protecting certain people. Matt would yeah. be protecting you know, guys like me yeah, out yeah. there. I loved it. So here I was, Area 51, doing helo inserts with Area some pretty. Area 51? Area 51, do some. Let's yeah. talk about it. Can we? Hanging out with the aliens. Yeah. Yeah, you were about, we were about to, people were trying to raid that place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. We were. We wa I wanted to raid that place. No, I didn't. It's kind of boring. Yeah. So, <laughs> I know. you're out of the hospital and you're working in Area 51? Yeah, I'm out of the hospital now. I'm working out there. I did an internship with them for a year and now I got hired, right, as a GS guy. And I'm Area 51 doing some Hilo inserts, some JSOX folks, kind of like doing some, some training. And I have a cell, my cell phone. I swear to God, no cell phone reception the entire time. Been there a week. And Area 51, right? Area 51. No cell phone reception. You shouldn't expect it. I walk out of the, of the defect and my phone rings. I'm like, what? And it says 0000. zero, 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 zero. And I'm like, that's weird. Pick it up. Hey, is this Captain Grober? Uh, yes, retired. Hey, this is Colonel Slaney from the Pentagon. I'm calling you to let you know that on, on, on Monday, it's 21st, you're going to receive a, a, a call from a senior high ranking official. Is this the right number? And will you be uh, will you be available between the hours of fourteen hundred and fourteen thirty? I'm like, what? Yes. He's like, okay, don't miss that call. And hung up. So then I look at my phone. No service. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. <laughs> Come on! I knew it, brother. We're getting uh, aliens. Aliens. We work with the aliens. Yes, you do. So what Black happens matter then? When, when that call comes through, was it? Yeah, so when a call comes through, so my boss, you know, my boss is a, a spec spec op guy, and he's like, "Yeah, why don't you take uh, why don't you take the half a, half day off, go home, and um, I don't know what the hell you did over there, but hopefully it's good news." <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> you know, I start thinking like, "Man, did I fuck up? Like, am I in trouble?" So I got a call, and phone rings, fourteen thirty, and it's it's a woman. It's like, "Hey, is this uh, Captain Grover?" Uh, Yes, ma'am. It's like, okay, would you mind holding for the President of the United States? Boom. Shut Boom. the fuck up. It was Obama. Yeah. And did he, did he answer like, uh, Flo? He goes, he goes. How you doing? Yeah, it, it, actually, you. so I met, I, nice had met meet you. I had met him a few times. He goes, it, 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 the way he goes, he's like, Flo, how you doing? I'm like, uh, Mr. President, uh, uh, it's, <laughs> we have a video. I'm doing fucking great, we sir. Have, we have video of this stuff. I'm like, Mr. President, I'm doing, doing fine. He's like, hey, no, we don't need no formalities. You know me. We met shadows. Call me Obama. I'm like, uh, no, sir. I'll call you, sir. I'll call you, Mr. President. He's like, look, I wanna, I'm want to. i calling you to let you know that I have the great privilege and honor to be presenting you with the Medal of Honor. And he started talking about. Out of nowhere. <laughs> out of nowhere. <laughs> he's talking about, like, how crazy is that for you? So I'm. So that, the craziest part of this whole thing is my wife and I were just watching Ellen, right? Cool, wait, wait. I, I, I love watching Ellen. Yeah, this, this <laughs> so it was pretty good. Yeah, yeah I love watching Ellen. Good. So I'm watching Ellen. Ellen, and I'm probably going to press the United States, so I'm thinking, like, and he's telling me all this stuff. He's like, the great responsibility behind it. Then he says to me at the end, he's like, Flo, you, uh, you can't tell anyone about this until we make the official announcement. He's like, I hate to do this to you, but that's direct order. I was like, hey, Raja, sir, Mr. President, absolutely. I won't talk to anyone about this. So he's like, all right, well, I'll see you in a couple weeks. <laughs> you kind of hung up. <laughs> so how many people did you tell? Well, I didn't tell many. <laughs> but I, I started thinking about this. My wife, obviously, his girlfriend at the time, yeah. was next to me. So she heard the whole thing because I'm a speaker. And I looked at her. I said, I got to tell my mother. If I don't fucking tell my mother, I'm not going to make it to the White House. She'll kill me. Yeah. So I called my mom. <laughs> And I'm like, Mom, I just want to let you know before anyone knows that um, Obama called me, President Obama called me, and he's going to be presenting me the Medal of Honor. She's like, oh, my God, you talked to Obama. She has no idea what the medal is. <laughs> so you talked to Obama. Right? We never talked about the Medal of Honor. She really didn't know. And I was like, and I explained to her what the medal meant, to my understanding. And, and, and to be honest, like, I didn't really have a great understanding of it. I knew what it meant, but I didn't sure. really know. And I told her. So then I realized my mom is the biggest gossip person you'll ever meet. Oh no! So I was like, Sh shit! Like she's gonna tell everyone. I just, just obviously, 
within five minutes disobeyed an order directly from the President of the United States. Yeah. So I was like, hey, but Obama told me this. He said to tell you, if you tell anyone, if you post this on Facebook, you're not invited to the White House. She's huh. like, he talked to me about me. I was like, oh, yeah, specifically, by your name. She's like, how does he know me? I'm like, man, they know everything. <laughs> <laughs> so she didn't say a word, but it was surreal. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, I called the Gold Star families. Yeah. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yes, I told them. I called I told, I called, um, I called Heather. Heather. Yeah, I called, um, you know. Explain, explain who Heather is, by the way. So Heather Gray, she was, uh, you know. Um, Dave's wife. Dave's wife. Yeah. Uh, she she was a uh, that called Cammy you know Joyce mm-hmm. uh, Cammy and, and Joyce yeah, yeah Joyce yeah from Alpharetta Georgia no they live in uh, in, um, in um, New York State Cammy Joyce black hair yeah with twins do you know her I went to high school with Cammy Joyce and her husband died overseas. Cammy Joyce Kennedy? Yes. Was I, this is my friend from high school. Are you fucking kidding me? Dead serious. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Will you take over for like two seconds? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. I'm, I've got chills now. All right. It's a good friend of mine from high school. <laughs> she was our, our trainer for uh, Chattahoochee Cougar. Like, she was our football trainer. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got it. So, and... Um, and then Pat yeah. Griffin. How, how, yeah, how was Heather? Heather was still in Colorado at the time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. It was the... Uh, I told them, I was like, unless you're, unless you're there, this is about your husband. It is more about your husband than it will ever be about me. And I need you there. I need you to be yeah. there. I need you. I, I need your support. And you, do, you, do you accept me receiving this? This recognition because I felt so uncomfortable. It was just I, I, a shame. Any and, any uh, medal, any medal like that is about the people that didn't make it back. And ultimately, yeah. And they were so happy for me, and they're like, "We'll be there." This is unbelievable. Your 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 a great representation of like what a husband's meant to us and yeah. what they did, and so. Yeah. I, I, by the way, I apologize for interrupting the podcast. Like, I've never done this before. This is one of my great friends from high school. That was her husband. Yeah. So they're on their way here now to Army-Navy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were on a flight. <laughs> I am. My mind is altered. Like, I. Look, man. I. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yes. We just text her, tell her you're with Ross Patterson. That's the craziest <laughs> shit of all time. So she was our great friend, one of our trainers on our phone. I mean, I, I cannot believe that's the same person. Yeah. So he died with you? Yeah. And, and so the craziest part about him was that he had just got in country, I think, a couple weeks. And so he had just got in country a couple weeks. And I'm walking, so we we're going to a security meeting. That's what happened on August 8th. And I'm walk, so I'm, I'm putting my, you know, my list of all the folks we we're going to put on the helos. And I'm walking out of the talk, and I see David, right, yeah. Major Gray. He goes, "Hey, Flo." And this entire tour for six months, every time he's like, "Hey, I'm going to go on patrol with you guys. I want to go check it." But every time he couldn't do it, he put one of these guys. He's like, "Hey, he hasn't been there. Take him there." He's like, and then finally, he's like, "Hey, meet, you know, meet Tom. He just got here, yeah, uh, and you know." Is it cool if we jump on the on the helos with you guys tomorrow and go to the security meeting and then go to a couple of the bases you're going to so he can go meet his his team? And I was like, hey, sir, always. I was like, you always got a seat in these uh, in, in in these yeah, birds, yeah. always. So that was the first time David Gray dropped on the helo in six months with me, and that was the first time I had met you know Tom Kennedy. And they came and they were they were going they were out there and they were in the back of the patrol and they all, they both got killed and. It's just crazy how life works, man. It's insane. I mean, I, speaking of how, how life works, like, I can't believe that. Small world. Very, very, very small. We are, it's a crazy thing, man. We're all somehow interconnected in a weird way. Yeah, because I'm like, I'm Except from ISIS. A, fuck them. Exactly. Fuck <laughs> ISIS. I'm from a small town in Georgia. Like, that, the chances that 
that was you in the same unit is unbelievable to me. And then him, you know, with Greg. Yeah, because I I'd, I'd spent, you know, Dave was one of my students, but he was coming back through the yeah, course a, crazy a story. second time, which I always disagreed with. So I always had a lot of conversations with him. Like when he got into my face, I'm like, I'm fucking with you, dude. You're, you did this 20 years ago. By the way, what a <laughs> like, sexy motherfucker oh he was. Oh, God, he's fucking amazing. He wore, he wore his razor panties he like a motherfucker. He so man. Like, oh, fucking uh, funny, too. Like, <laughs> and you just, you just, you didn't fuck with him. You're like, yeah, you're fucking cool. But here, here's the weird part about all this that I'm going through right now, right? You got the Medal of Honor, but there's a bunch of people out there that, unless you know them personally, from high school, families, friends, or whatever, they don't get the same recognition, or you don't know that their story, and unless you said it, I wouldn't have known Cammy's husband's story at all. Yeah, That's the craziest thing to me. Yeah, and so um, the greatest gift that I've ever been given in life is the opportunity to tell their stories. Yeah. You know, um, when, I, when I stood on that stage on November 12th, you know, 2015, when I received the medal, if you, brought, if you watch the videos, you see my face, I'm very emotional. And it's because I've never felt so much shame in my life. Leroy Petra was the same. Yeah, Leroy. If you and, watch, so, and so was Romache. Yeah, Romache too. If you watch Romache and Petri's acceptance really? thing, yeah. It was just explain that because th that you only, shame because you, you only get that award if all your buddies fucking get fucked up, dude. And, and, and the fact that no one ever put I mean I dude Rainbow is a fucking is a, is a fictional character. You don't go out there and fight the enemy and you don't serve by yourself. It's never about you. So it's about the men and women around you. So it's about the team. That's what makes it so tough to coming home. You know, that's why these bracelets and things like that are so important. That's why these tattoos that we do and these conversations that we have talk about the men and the guy and women that didn't come home are so important. So here I am being singled out with my team there, gold star families in front of me, some of the you know highest ranking officials, all these fucking cameras, all these lights, yeah, on a stage. And with a president of the United States saying that how great of a hero I am and I represent, you know, he's a great American and stuff. I was never, I'd never been so ashamed in my life because I'm like, I failed on that day. I ran that security team. I don't care what I could have done or couldn't have done. I, to this day, I still fail. Four of my brothers didn't come home. Come here, Sergeant Grief, the highest ranking NCO in the war in Afghanistan to this day died on my patrol. That's, a, that's something that was tough, and then you're telling me I'm a hero? I hate that word. I can't stand it. Can't stand it. Because I'm a hero? That's a Griffin. That's a Gray. That's a Kennedy. That's a Reagan. Right. And they're families. You have to live with the consequences of that shit every day. So it took me a little while, but I realized, my God, now I have, yeah, I have a medal, right? It's right here. I can't even get it the fuck out. I'm going to break it. Well, you have it. So I have a medal. Hold that, hold that up to camera if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, go ahead. I, it's the first time I've ever held one. So I have a medal, this one. Well, not this one. So this is the second one. This is the best part is they put this foot display. So people are like, oh, it's a fake medal. Like, no, it's a fucking real medal of honor. Cost twenty six ninety nine at the PX. <laughs> and the, real, the, the, the one that was presented to me by the president, I, I returned it to the unit. So really? Clint That's Roman really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've never held one of you. No. I'm going to get a picture of this. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Jared just said he's going to take a picture of this. I, I, I would say this. Uh, like, this is one of the first time in podcast history, like, we've been stunned by this story because we don't know. And the, the, the beauty of doing a podcast is we don't do pre-interviews because we don't want to know. Right. We want live reactions and interactions yeah. and everything else that you went through and everything else. So you have this around your neck from President Obama. Yeah. That picture is infamous. It's everywhere. Everybody who everybody who knows you has probably seen that picture of Obama putting that around your neck and yeah. you're crying. When you were crying, was that the shame element or was that pride? Well, it was really hot. <laughs> so I was sweating the shit out of this thing <laughs> and I was about to fall out. You know it's true. But it was about it was about looking at the gold star families in front of me and um, feeling ashamed that 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 the world was watching me and instead of watching them. Um, 
it was, it was a feather. I had my team that was with me. Uh, you know, I had, I had Brink, I had Ochart, I had Secor, I had Balarama, I had Mahoney. Uh, and they did just as much as I did that day. I was just the closest guy. Everyone, you know, Mahoney followed me. He got the Silver Star. He followed me right into it. He's like, oh, damn. Oh, by the way, I was promoted. That was the day I was promoted to captain, August 8, 2012. <laughs> yeah, really? So tell him. It was a fucking Connie Network uh, little gift. But he followed me. He's like, damn. LT is about to do something stupid. Let me go fix him up. And, you know, fucking fix this shit again. <laughs> go to the NCOs. And, yeah, it just felt a shame, but they, they pulled me through. The, the families pulled me through. That's incredible, man. Uh, it's one of those things that, look, how many people have the Medal of Honor right now, today? There were 71 of us right now. 71? Yeah. Is it the same type of fraternity of, like, y- you know, other awards you see around the country do you guys all keep in touch how does that work because it's so fascinating you always hear hey i want to serve my country be as brave as i can and do my job and but something like this is so out of the realm of expectations like yeah do you guys talk to each other you all friends like clint and so i'm 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 I'm, i mean some of my close friends are clint sal you know i mean dakota Right, yeah. even Dakota doesn't come to any of the events. Uh, he's got his issues, you know, in terms of like I, I think he's, he's talking about he, Dakota Myers. Yeah, Dakota yeah. Myers, you know, but he's a he's a, he's an unbelievable dude, you know, and, and I respect the heck out of him. Uh, yeah, I mean we uh, we have two events a year, and we have Medal of Honor Day in March, and we do something in New York usually, so it's about three days together, and then we have the convention that rotates every year from different cities in October, September, October. We all come together. I'm actually the vice president of the the fourth region. I don't know how many regions we got. So my job is to report every month on like updates around with, uh, to multiple Melvin Mel- recipients. Yeah, but we stay we stay in touch. We talk. Uh, and I, I'll be honest with you, it's a dysfunctional group. There's a lot of personalities. A lot of how, like how so? I mean, you know, you got. Shit, you know this. Uh, where I spoke at the uh, DNC. Yeah, dude, I got I had a lot of fucking pissed off uh, Medal of Honor recipients. You know, are you, are I you mean, a Democrat? I, I, I'm a Republican. I spoke at the DNC. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. <laughs> why? Because D- maybe at some point we can do that again without everybody getting fucking butt hurt. Exactly. About it. Somebody's got to take a stand at some point and say, I don't give a fuck what you believe. Here's what I believe. Yeah. I told. I told. Was Brett, it for Obama at the time? No, it was uh, uh, during the Hillary Clinton uh, 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 Trump. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. for Hillary. Yeah, it was, so it was for Hillary. They called me and asked me if I were, if I was willing to go out there and talk about veterans and the importance of veterans and why, you know, the responsibility of POTUS to serve our veterans. And so I said, it took me a while to answer yes or no because I was I knew the risk of going on a political stage like that. Sure. But um, you know, the RNC didn't call me. So I was like, and it's not like I, I expected the RNC or the DNC to call me. I didn't expect anyone to call me. But I looked at it. I said, you know what? Screw it. I want to go talk about veterans. I want to talk about why it's so important to have, you know, a capable individual to make the right decisions for our veterans and our active and our active duties right. and their families. So I, did, I took this. I, I took the chance and I went and look. There's a lot of positive. There was a website that came after me, about 3,000 comments, calling me an ISIS sympathizer, an Al-Qaeda lover, Obama's son, and then we're all like devil, Muslim worshiper, devil, you know, whatever. And I was like, yeah. I got some, I got lost friends, but they're not friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're going, yeah, who gives a shit? Look, at, read my message. Talk about what I was talking about in there, and then, and, and then let me know, like, you know, it's about. I spent, I spent. Fucking an hour of my day going back and forth with Crenshaw just about VA shit. Like that he's working on. And it's like, yeah, if I post something that that I fucking talk to Dan Crenshaw, oh fuck him, fuck him. Right. He's not for it's like, no motherfucker, he's working for us. Yeah. No, he maybe, is. maybe we disagree on one thing. It doesn't mean we don't have an ally hey, on the hill fucking working for us. He's yeah. an incredible speaker, by the way. Oh, I love he's him. Great. Man. He's an incredible he's great. speaker. Great guy. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually like, look, I don't agree with everything he's, he's, he's out there well, doing. But you don't have to. No, exactly. That's the beauty of it. I don't exactly. have to. Yes. I don't have to agree with him. Yeah. And I, I enjoy, he, I, I love how he debates. He listens. He yeah. listens, and then he interjects when he needs to. But he listens. on the information that you gave, and he does research. Yeah. How crazy yeah. is that? Yeah. He has research. He comes probably, out there with facts. Probably the best debater in modern history is Christopher Hitchens. 
he was an author for the Atlantic and a lot of other publications. Right. But he would always, he wouldn't say shit. He would listen for 45 minutes and then respond in order. Regardless of how you feel about what he said, that's how you debate each other. That's how Tip O'Neill did it back in the day. Like, we're just gone. Our, our, our public discourse is gone now. Well, I think well, now it's just yeah. noise. It's just noise. It's, and it's, it, and that's it's gotten I, even worse. And I, like, over the last three years since that election, like, the Heath probably had to have been on you for three years at this point. No, I got. Thank God I got. I got people forget about me real quick. They're like, dude, he's got a big nose. Forget about this guy. Um, it was it was really interesting because you know Reddit. Reddit is. Oh, ruthless. It's a ruthless. lot of it's a lot of miserable people over on that site. It's 4chan, and then there's Reddit, <laughs> and then there's hell. So you, <laughs> YouTube comments and hell. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was like, oh, I think the funnest part though was the conspiracy theories about me uh, not being real, and about me like you know being an Obama like creation for like reaching the Medal of Honor. I was like, damn, I'm watching this. I'm like, some of them are pretty good. You're like, wow, you really did a lot of terrible <laughs> research. You really put a lot of time into this, you idiot, you know, but it was, yeah. We got to remember one thing, man, and this is why I I, I, I love what you guys do because you're out there having a conversation and you uh, keeping it real. And, and also, we don't care who anybody has voted for, all of us. Like, that's no, what a democracy he is. He disagrees with me that I think doctors are fake. Yes. <laughs> but we're still friends. We're still friends. He hates science. And we're I still friends. I think science is fake. I think pharmace the pharmacies are dumb. But, but that's the beauty of a, of a democracy and, like, for you to go and speak at a Hillary thing. No, there's only one part of the Declaration or the, the Pledge of Allegiance that matters. The phrase, one nation. Yes. Oh, that's God. the only it part of the whole goddamn thing that matters. And for you to go and speak about veterans, it should have nothing to do with politics whatsoever. That was the opportunity presented to you. That's, that, uh, that, exactly. And I'll be honest with you, though. Like, hey, hey, to all whatever you want to say about her... I will. Pro I, this is for my own personal view. I saw her come to Walter Reed nine times personally, without cameras, without anybody. Go to the Fisher House, talking to spouse, she talked to my mom, and stuff. So, and I never met you know President Trump at the time, right? Sure. I mean, you know, I, I never met him. I never had a conversation with him. I knew nothing about him. So who am I to judge him except based on what he's you know I'm hearing him say? So at least I had some type of connection with her. Yeah, I, and I see what she she had done. Is she perfect? <laughs> no. No. Am I am I perfect? Hell no. You know that. I've been out with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she killed Epstein, obviously, but yeah. <laughs> no. <I'm>, <laughs> <laughs> no, but no one's perfect. And like, look, any, any, here's the thing. In my eyes, anybody who takes the time out to come and visit, take time out of their day without cameras and all that other shit, like. There's got to be something said for that versus, all right, there could be somebody sitting in the White House doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, it was a perspective. Yes. That's all it was. And now, you know what? It was, it's not like we had a lot to go with at that point. And so, you know, that was no personal decision. Obviously, some people disagree with it. Sure. Uh, that's the beauty of this country we fought for, right? Yeah. That's, a, did that's what vote, I say. Did you vote you, for you kinda counter. You kind of you counter. I did. You contradict yourself. As a veteran, when you go so hostile towards anybody of a different point of view, it's like, okay, yeah, they think differently. They're allowed to. Yeah, they're allowed to. You yeah, disagree like, with them all what, you want. What exactly did you sign up for? Yeah. Did you sign up to fucking have a dictatorship or a theocracy or whatever the fuck? Or did you sign up for fucking liberty, bitch? The yeah. thing is, is go ahead and go out there and do a Black, Black Lives Matter protest. But if you come and try and rip a sign out of somebody's hand... You're wrong no matter what side you're Fact. on. If you try and push somebody or you assault somebody because they're wearing something, you're wrong. What about what about you know taking a knee piece? I don't care. Oh my god. That's his right. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who are you talking about? I'm I'm and people take it people take it personal that it, oh the men and women for that song. They fucking fought for the first amendment. It's yeah. so funny. He's sit, using it. So funny because you know um one of my really good friends is Adam Gaze, head coach of the Jets, former Miami Dolphins, and I, I and you know, for, as a passion, I support him and I go talk to his players and the team and stuff. And so, here I am in Chicago working, you know, I'm about to go to work, and I get a call from Jelani Jenkins, uh, um, oh my God, uh, Arian Foster, Kenny yeah. Stills, and they're Kenny like, Stills. "Hey man, 
you know, we were getting a lot of hate about taking a knee and like, you know, you know, it was, it, because it was it was Nate Boyer at Green Beret that taught Kaepernick into doing that in the first place. You know that? No, right? no, no, no. Yeah. Wait, wait, Tommy. Nate's one of my close friends. He never, never, no, never, no. never, never taught. It was Ka- he taught to- Ka- Kaepernick was sitting on the bench. It was like that's disrespectful. Why don't you take a knee? Because that's showing reverence towards everything. Okay. And people have misinterpreted yeah. that now. Yeah, well, that's a better way of putting it. But because, Kaepernick, yeah. Kaepernick's still a piece of shit. Based on his his <laughs> well, recent, I mean, his, yeah, yeah, yeah. his like, recent behavior. Like I said, it's his right to do it. Does it accomplish anything? Well, no. But Fucking. What, so what those guys called me about, they're like, yo, I'm, I'll never get it. So FaceTime me. I'm like, Rick, like, what the hell? Like, they're like, yeah, we're getting a lot of hate from the military community. Like, we're not doing this about the military community. We're doing this about, you know, police and justice. And we're trying to bring some awareness. And I said, well, gentlemen, do you know the history? Yeah, find behind? another way. Yeah. Find another way. But, but it's not even that, but honestly, today, I, that's, that's, that's part of the argument for a lot of folks who are really angry at them. Like, first of all, do you know why these people are, you know, understand why they're mad at you? What's the history behind this? It started before in World War One, right, with the Boston Red Sox, right, and it really yeah. picked up during World War Two about paying homage, right, tribute and honoring those who go out there and serve yeah. overseas and die for us, right, before a game. I said you pick that setting to push your message. Of course, you're going to anger a lot yeah, of people yeah, about that. Yeah. But now, who are you going to be? Are you going to be hypocrites? Are you going to walk the walk? Or are you going to just talk the walk? Take a fucking knee and do nothing and then to do help nothing. the community. Yeah, that's what I mean. And that's I mean, if like, you want, go find Kenny Stills. Like Google Kenny Stills. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. On YouTube, he does Kenny so Stills, much. He's on the Houston Texans right now. Yeah. yeah. He does so much to work with the police, to work with the community, to bridge the gap. They all did. So that was my challenge today. I was like, I will support you. I will stand. When you take a knee, I'll be right next to you standing. But I, and I will hug you after that. Why? Because I went and fought. For the right to make a decision i won't judge you for it but i want you to be educated behind where you might be angering other people but you're you're a man make a decision and live with it yeah but make a difference positive difference so would you consider yourself a democrat then i uh, no i don't consider myself republican or a democrat anymore great yeah. and, and the reason i ask this is this i think everybody listener wise or in the military considers everybody who's in the military to be Republican yeah. because of 2A rights and everything else. You just vote for whoever the best candidate is? So I, I, I voted for, for example, the last three votes. I'll t- I mean, I'm honest with this. Sure. Right? McCain, Romney, and Hillary. Go figure that one out, right? Yeah. And I never voted for Obama. I love Obama. I mean, I really do. I respect him incredibly. You know, I, 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 we know each other. It. He's, he's called me as a mentor in that sense, like in the sense of like I want to emulate a lot of things that he's done, right, and to, to get where he's at. And I really appreciate him, but I never voted for him, right, because I disagree with his military policies when he was running for office. I really did. And so, and and, and then the other thing, the other way, in the recent election, I listened to a couple, you know, debates, and I just kind of looked at policies and ideas. And I, there's some stuff that I supported uh, uh, with Trump on the on the financial and economic side. But some of the ways that he, he had talked about certain things, and, you know, I, I, I didn't agree with it at the time. But here's the thing. It doesn't matter who I vote for. I, as an American, I support the president of the United States. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and that's what we say on the show all the time. Like, we don't care who you voted for. I'm just glad we got the opportunity to vote. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a damn great blessing. But Not I, many places have that. I'm yeah. sure. Fucking four humans ago, there was a king. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't get to say shit. And nothing. And they were all inbred. <laughs> so they're dumb as fuck. <laughs> but we I'm were, sure you... We were all... Gonna, we we were, were all, a person. You've had to have taken heat over that, right? I did. I took heat. But, you know, um, I um, I understood. I knew what I was getting myself into. I, I, it was a little shocking, some of the comments. Uh, and I stopped reading them. Uh, after a while, I was like, this is dumb. It's, just, it's not healthy. Uh... You know, as long as no one showed up in front of my front door trying to, like, harm my wife, yeah. I'm good. If they did, then I would fucking kill them. But it's no big deal. You know? But it's life, man. And you make choices, and you got to live with the consequences. Is it as brutal as, as the internet makes it seem where it's just like, hey, man, fuck you. We hate you. Because that's what it seems like now. Like, it's brutal. It is. So it's brutal. Yeah, but have, you ever, have you ever had it in person, though? 
I see it much more in the comments. Yes. But guess what? No one's ever walked up and gone, oh, fuck you. Not, Jared uh, not, says this all the time. Not yeah. a single time. Yeah. yeah, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. see how violent it is? It but might happen like, tonight now. Good luck. Thanks, yeah. man. <laughs> Some guys right here is like, he's looking at me. He's like, fuck him up. Is it? Is it happening tonight? <laughs> man, I hope not. <laughs> look, man, look how pretty I got, man. My nose job. I mean, it just fucked it up twice. <laughs> you look like a new man. Nah, man. No, I missed you. Nah, dude. I haven't seen you in almost a year, over a year. Yeah. Oh, was, yeah. I, I, I really enjoyed that time we were at your DC house and spent a whole day just fucking off. Dude, I'll tell you what, um, I've been watching you guys, you know what you've been doing, and, and fuck, you've blown up in a positive way. And it's not ever gotten to your head. That's what I love about you guys. <laughs> I think no, the most. We're, we're in a pizzeria in Philadelphia right now. Yeah. Like, but the most important thing that's ever happened from the Drinking Rose community happened a couple weeks ago with Richard Stayskull. Yeah. Yes. Finally yeah. getting his day in court. Like he's been trying to, trying to sue the DOD for malpractice, for medical malpractice for year, like two years now, and finally it came through. I think it's going to be happened in, yesterday. Yes. The, the House vote yesterday, and then the Senate votes next week. Like it's, we're flipping uh, the Ferris Doctrine. It's been around for seventy years. And it's, well, I think it's close to $422 million or something like that. Like well, it's in the, the budget? National Defense Authorization Act is yeah. huge. It's a big, it's, a, it's big. It's a lot of money. And, like, yeah. the show has been able to, to help a lot of people. And, I mean, shit, we flooded Lindsey Graham's <laughs> inbox. I'm sure you wasn't Lindsey stoked about Graham. it. But, yeah, it happened and it went down. Um, for you personally, what are you passionate about these days? Like, what do you stand up for and fight for? And are people asking you to fight for things where you're like, hey, man, just because I have a Medal of Honor, like, I'm not going to stand up for your shitty, you know. You, 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 so the second question, you get a lot of requests, you know, and I'm, I'm sure, like, you've spoken to Dakota and all stuff. You get a lot of crazy requests. Um, the, hard, the, the, the greatest lesson I learned early on was from Sal Junta when he told me, learn how to say no. It's okay to say no. Uh, you're not going to be able to solve everyone's problems. You're not going to be able to be part of everyone's campaigns. Uh, you solved our problem, though, when we they wouldn't let us in Walter Reed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at you. I just that blew my mind. With the, one of the just stack up all the letters and messages. From soldiers but you got in, hurting right? inside Walter Reed. But you got in, and right? they said no, and their leadership said no. You guys can't come. And I called. Oh yeah, yeah. you, you threatened really to wanted... fucking go down there. Yeah, Yo, I will fucking walk in there. Yeah, and you guys did a hell of a job. <laughs> you played that damn movie. They were so you. you I, I don't. Uh, do you understand how powerful that movie was for our community? Do you understand how powerful that movie was for our wounded warriors? Range fifteen. I mean, you know, 15. I didn't until we went to Walter Reed. And, like, when, when you it, called me about this, yeah. I was like, fuck yeah, I got you. I'm like, what? You, you can't get through these these folks? I got it. I called. I mean, I go to the top. I, I skip. I skip every step. Well, it was an 04 that, that was blocking us. Yeah, it was, it was just like, no, I mean, what? what's the movie about? No way. Like, it's going to affect them. They got pieces. I'm like, we play Silver Lining Playbook. Like, Fucking six weeks ago about suicide, <laughs> literally, like for real, to like a bunch of people healing in a hospital. Two people who got picked the ass to the fucking wazoo. Everybody wants us to be beyond reproach, but we are a bunch of fucking dirt bags. We're sh you're a shitty human being. You're probably a shitty human being. I'm definitely I, I a shitty human being. I refuse to believe that. I am a saint. We are pieces <laughs> of shit that happen to be patriotic. See, guess what? We play that movie. At the USO, and and it, and at the end of the movie, the the smiles, the joke, people forgot their missing limbs, people forgot they're blind from one eye, people forgot they're fucking burnt. You know, families were laughing. It was funny. It was it was great to see veterans and 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 non-veterans together making a comedy and, and and having a good time. And it brought joy. No one gives a shit about. Oh, is it violent? Does they like? Does they say bad words in there? Like, are you that kidding? Guy are lost you? his leg in a war. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you think he can't handle some violence? <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, it's like, why well, he's gonna? It's really gonna kick in his PTS. Trust me. You talking is kicking in his PTS. <laughs> that's what's kicking in it. So like, no. Actually, that's gonna help him. It's gonna help him connect. It's gonna help him have a conversation with someone around. It's gonna help him to fucking smile. A person hey, has a smile hey, in six hey, months. Hey, did you hear about Range 15? Yeah, it's yeah. fucking crazy, right? 
Yeah, it is crazy. Let's talk about what we did in war. <laughs> yeah. That's how those conversations go 100%, every single man. fucking time. But by the way, since we're talking about it, you know that was Jared's idea. That was all his, his whole thing. Everything. Yeah. Well, sometimes even jackasses got to fucking better. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, my passion, honestly, my passion has been always to, uh, it, it's going to sound tacky. It's going to sound stupid. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. My passion has been the same since I realized, since the day I decided not to take my life. Was there a day that you did decide to take your life? Oh, absolutely. When you, was that? Uh, uh, almost, uh, probably three straight months um, when I was inpatient. Wow. I was trying to figure it out. I just couldn't understand why I lived. I had massive survivor's guilt. I was under a lot of drugs. I was very angry at myself. I was, I was a 29-year-old kid that fucking had, you know, I had got I, I got a Dear John letter in the middle of the tour, uh, of, of the uh, of the tour, which I was super happy about. Uh, not like, in, in yeah, yeah, yeah. like I, I felt freedom. It was great. Of course, and. You know what I was thinking about? I was like, how many beers can I drink and I get home and play Xbox? And I'm alive. And I got Kennedy with twins that are a year old. Yeah. I got Gray with three kids. I got Griffin with two kids. And I got Reggae with two kids. Fucking community guys. Well respected in the military. Well respected outside of the military. And who the fuck am I? What do I bring to the table when I live and they die? And you add ketamine, oxys, Dilaudid, all that stuff to you. And your demons inside your head start playing tricks. And I'll tell you to this day, no ISIS, no Al-Qaeda, no Haqqani Network, no Taliban has been tougher and a worse enemy than my own mind to me. And when I got through it, it was because of Travis Mills. When he came to my room and he brought some, he just gave me a purpose for life again. He reminded me that, bro, you're breathing. You have an opportunity to honor your brothers that are not and honor their families. Go tell their stories. And he gave me a mission, right? It was just like, it was so simple, 15 minutes. And I opened up to him and we talked and, and it was the start of my healing. But from that point on, I said, the rest of my life, I just want to be a positive thing in my environment. Whatever I can do every day to be a positive thing. And guess what? Some days that could be, you know, being on a podcast, having a conversation with people. Another be opening a fucking door to someone. Yeah. It doesn't have to be magic. I don't have to solve cancer. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Right? It's about being a positive in my direct environment. Owning the fact that I can't change the world based upon by myself. What I can do, though, is change my environment by my actions. And so that's my passion. To give back, earn the right to still be in this earth, be a good person, even though it's really hard because I'm a shitbag. And, <laughs> and, and really, honestly, at the end of the day, Fucking, when I'm fucking six feet under or whatever, I'm cremated. I just want to hope that I go back out there. They're all fucking waiting. All my boys, Kennedy, Gray, you know, Reggae, fucking Griffin, other Kennedy, you know, Brown, all my yeah. friends I lost over the years. And they're like, yo, you still a shit bad, man. You, you, we're, we're proud of you. That's my passion. Yeah. And that's cool, man, because it drives me every day. It's amazing. What do you do now in real life? So right now I'm the chief of staff for Boeing commercial airplanes. Um, unfortunately, we're going through a very tough year uh, with the crashes. It's a great gig, though. It's an uh, unbelievable opportunity. We have 20,000 veterans in the company. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we do a hell of a lot in the community. I uh, every day I'm blessed to go to work and work with the people that I work with. It's it's a huge honor. And the fact that actually like, are you living in Seattle? I do. I live in oh, Seattle. Oh shit! All right, all right. Yeah, I live in Seattle. I and need to go to Seattle now. Yeah, no, you can't. That's what I said to him earlier. No, he's good. I don't know what the hell you're, you're working on. Uh, no, what? I'm hanging out too. I'm no, no, no. I'm coming too. over there, and we're gonna. I'm gonna take you to my hometown. What's your hometown? Posbo. Cere- Cerebral Posbo. <laughs> yeah, we call it Cerebral yeah. Posbo. On we're the just show. gonna do a whole. We're gonna we're gonna dine at Sly's Bakery. <laughs> we're gonna we're just gonna have a fucking hoot. We're gonna end up at the Mucky Duck. You just drove him to drink. <laughs> That's good. Well, you did that. You did that. Uh, hey. Is Seattle getting an NBA team back? Well, I'll tell you what. They're starting with a hockey team. Are they really? Yep. Very excited. I think it's 2021 is when it happened. I'm really no excited shit. about it. All right. And uh, probably NBA team next. That's amazing. This, uh, the, this look. fucking guy's yawning. Oh, that's Jared, though. I need another though. drink. That's Jared. Tom. If you, if you go back. You know, hey. By the way, you also started talking about sports. Uh, who is. Uh, I fucking like sports. Dale. Uh, 
It was uh, it was Dale. Dale Die. Oh yeah. That he goes uh Dale it was Nice it, yawn. Dale turd. and Steve Howie. Yeah. <laughs> and Steve Howie. Steve Howie doesn't like give you any breaks, yeah. No. Sorry, you guys do a little sports show. Yeah, we do. We do. We do a... Uh, it's a big sports a show. A big sports show, yeah. <laughs> it's number one on Spotify two weeks ago. No bigs. Are you a Seahawks fan? Uh, well, it's a tough question. Um, <laughs> I'm a Chicago Bears fan. And I'm a Jets fan. Oof. I wouldn't admit either of those this and, year. And uh, I, I will support the uh, Seattle Seahawks because I live in Seattle, and 90% of my workforce in Seattle is a diehard Seahawks fan, so, so I, I don't get... Hun- Hanged, I will say yes. I support the Seattle Seahawks. Man, well, they're, look, they're, no, going they're, they're playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, they're they're great. Uh, Seahawks. Uh, C- I, I know you're super excited about this. Seahawks Ravens Super Bowl. What? Ooh. What is that? No way. 49ers. No. no Ravens. Way. No. Maybe I'm Saints. still going Saints. I'm going Saints. Ooh. Yeah. We going dirty. I'll, I'll go Saints Ravens. It's Saints or 49ers. Yeah. If if Lamar Jackson can stay healthy, I'll, yeah. I'll yeah, we'll go that. Yeah, you guys are wrong. And this will okay. be airing during the first week of the playoffs. We can I'm make going it right, bull so sharks. Yes, yes. You got yeah. hockey, hockey and NBA, and NBA Hell yeah. going hey, against you, each other. Man, you. Tiger Woods going against He's a each other. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, that motherfucker wins everywhere he goes. Everywhere. I mean, everywhere. look, look he, talk about how, how much he's messed up. He didn't cheat on one woman. He cheated on like uh, you know, he didn't cheat with just one woman. He had a whole fucking calendar. A hundred. A hundred. Is that? Well, let me ask you that. I'm going to put you in a Tiger Woods category because there's not many of you, right? Were you married before or after you, you received this medal? After. 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 Yeah. How hard is that? Not hard at all. Really? No, Dude, she's cool. She's my best friend in the world. Yeah. So there was no other like, hey, Thank man. You. People are just coming up literally buying you shots as we're on air. They're, They're guys, they, though. <laughs> but there's no I got that effect. Is there any jealousy of like... Hey man, that, there's a lot of ladies coming up to you. No, no. Really? I tell you what, she's. Uh, I, I I got lucky, dude. That's the Medal of like, Honor isn't like being Justin Bieber. There's no, not like oh, thousands stop, of women. No, stop. Stop. It, it is. Stop. It is. We are celebrities. Yes. We're F level celebrities. <laughs> we always joke about this. We're like we're F level. Like that means like literally you got a Wikipedia page and it's probably half the time fucked up and fake. Yeah. And like you know because some. Some people go out there and write some crazy shit in my stuff, man. Exactly, but it's real. But I'm it's like, real. I'm like, is that me? Because I don't remember that being me. But, yeah, so we're F-level. So thank you very much. We're almost there with Bieber. Actually, tell you what. I think Bieber's F-level now, too. Uh, let me ask you this. Because you, you get a book deal out of it, right? So uh, I wrote a book, yes. Yes. Eight Seconds of Courage. Yeah. Um, it, and it does well. Did you get a movie out of it as well? There are conversations, but... Um, they're, uh, no, they, they can't figure out who would play me. They're like, you're so fucking ugly that we just really don't have anyone else. I'm like, you did a movie yeah, about the dude, elephant you know, man. I mean, right, they, they, we got to dig up an old one. Yeah. You remember Donkey Lips from Salute Your Shorts? We got to we gotta get Who do you think would play Flo in a movie? Donkey Lips. <laughs> Rap it. Uh, I'd say Drake, dude. Is yeah, that Drake, Drake. Everybody says say Drake. Drake. You know, Drake yeah, would be great. We How about Jimmy? Uh, one of the Bourne movies when he f- in, he's in Morocco and he's fighting a guy in Morocco. Everybody, is there one on the moped? Mm. They said that guy looks a lot like That awesome. Yes, yes, yes. I have no idea. I don't even think he speaks the language. But, Boy, you know, if you put Drake, though, like, I mean, same hairline, same everything. Yeah. Yes. It's Drake. It's got to be and Drake. he has to hang out with you for eight months to understand yeah. you. Uh, got me my feelings. You almost came to the bathroom with me. I was struggling a little bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I was just trying to help out. But that's I real. That. That's yeah, real. You'll come with me to the bathroom. Yeah. That'd be a really awkward moment. But you want to spend eight months with me. You got to everything that bought me. Yeah. 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 Because uh, you always wonder if it's the movie or, or whatever. Hey, Cammy Joyce has set us up. Tell him us. Tell, tell us, us that I such a small world. It's crazy, right? She's unbelievable. It's, what? It's, what it's, hey, hey. Let's take a second to... Um, yeah, because I, I, I don't do this very often, or I never have. Like, we do the Drinking Bro of the Week at the end of the show. I've seen her posts about her husband a hundred times. I do not know his story simply because it is not that famous or, you know, it is not written enough about, as well as hundreds of thousands of soldiers who die overseas. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. If it weren't for you, I would not know her story today. Like... It's cra- it's crazy to me. Yeah, I mean it's absolutely crazy to me. And and uh, uh, the unfortunate part is that we have too many people that die. But the reality is, this is what p- 
people like Tom and and David and and Kevin are why this country is the greatest country in the world. Cause look at this. Look at look at look at this right now. Look at where we are. We're at Porta. Yeah. Fucking great pizza, by the way. Great uh, pizza. You know, do a podcast, drinking, having a good time. We're gonna have a hell of a good, a good time tonight. Tomorrow is a big football game, Army Navy, which obviously Huge. the Army's gonna destroy the Navy. <laughs> and, and, and and that's a ten point spread. You know that, right? Ah, fuck. Really? Yes. Where's the money at, baby? Ten. Navy you minus ten. But the reality I'm trying to say is this: is that we are free, and as, there's a reason behind it. It's because from day one, read our constitution, right? It's about sacrificing for each other. It's about sacrificing for the character and ethos of this nation. It's about doing the right thing. We have many faults because we're humans. But when shit hits the fan and we need to band together, it doesn't fucking matter if you're a Republican, a Democrat, Tea Party, whatever else, you're independent. No matter if you're black, white, Asian, we stand together. I'm an immigrant. I didn't speak English until I was 12 years old. And I came to this country, and this country allowed me to call myself an American. And when this country was facing war, the only thing I could think of was, I need to fucking earn the right to call myself an American. And so as my country's at war, I need to go fight for my country. And when I went in the army, the greatest thing ever happened. I mean, I, I, nothing will ever be able to compare to what happened in my military career, which is I got to witness individuals from different worlds willing to die for each other. I always talk about this. You have a kid from fucking Massachusetts, Tom Brady land, Ivy League school, whatever you want to call it, with a fucking kid from Compton, African-American kid that barely graduated high school, if he did, and they're wearing the same uniform, fucking shitty-ass haircuts, and they're out there smoking cigarettes, Put a dip in, fucking talking to each other and dying for each other, sacrificing each other, becoming best friends for life, best friends at their weddings. No other organization in the world can unite individuals the way our military does. No one. No matter if you're Muslim, Christian, Lutheran, Hindu, Jewish, black, white, whatever, Republican, Democrat. Don't fucking matter. Because when bullets go flying past your fucking head, when bomb starts going around, that shit goes away. The only thing that matters is, do I have trust and confidence that dude next to me to fucking do the right thing when no one's watching to protect my life? And guess what I do? That solves everything. And I, and I found out in combat. I found out in Afghanistan. And I am forever grateful. I will forever have hope. So in shitty days like we are living today and all this disagreement and shit, I am lo- I'm happy that people like Dan are out there fucking representing our nation, taking the risk. Cause this, it is a, it is just what he's doing, and what many of them are doing, is just as fucking honorable as serving our nation because they're under attack every day. You talking about Dan Crenshaw, yeah. And they're out there rap- trying to represent the idea that we lived in, and I'm fucking honored by that. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm blessed, and um, I'm fucking blessed, man. Look, hey man, it has been a fucking absolute pleasure having you on the show. Now is the point where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Who would you like to give to the drinking bro of the week? Somebody who's inspired you, somebody that has helped you, or somebody you just like to, to nominate it to. I mean, I look, I'm gonna join it with you and, and say Cammy's husband, but I, give it to all of them. Yeah. I wanna say I have many guys uh, you know, Major Kennedy, Tom Kennedy, David Gray. You know, Kevin Griffin, reggae, but another guy is another Mel Mine recipient um, that uh, I wrote a post about a couple of days ago. And I'm not close to him like that, but I admire the shit out of him. His name is Ron Schur. Ron Schur has been battling stage four cancer for quite a few years. And a couple of weeks ago, he got bad news again more tumors in his brain, more growth in his lungs. And he is out there traveling the country and doing the right thing. It's not about fame. It's not about money. 
He doesn't use the metal to make a living. Shit, I need to not do that. Um, no, don't worry about it. And he's trying to spend the last days, months, years of his life being able to talk and inspire people. And he's got a family, he got beautiful, two beautiful kids, and I don't want to, honestly, like, I don't want to promote another Mel of Honor City because they're Mel of Honor City. I want to promote Ron for who he is. And I've never been, I've been super honored by him, man. Like, he, 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 he grounds me. Um, and what he's going through, going through uh, chemo right now, radiation treatment today, yesterday, uh, after spending a week out there in Seattle with the, the SF and sure. the community, it's unbelievable. And so, and then lastly, you guys. I don't think, I mean, drinking bros, having a good time. You, you brought me here today. You're asking me about another individual that I want to highlight. You guys are, you're changing the game. You're in, you're you're our influencers that can move the needle fa more than I will ever move the needle as a Mel Valley City. That's 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 saying a lot because you're you matter. You have an unbelievable voice and you're doing the right thing. You're challenging ideas. You're not picking one side, and you're having a fucking good time while doing it. That's what else can we ask for? So you guys, I fucking nominate you, cocksuckers. You know? Hey man, Thank cheers. You. I'm not humble about a lot of shit, but I'm humble about that. Uh, I seriously, I, I for real, it's been an honor to have you on the show. Pun intended. Cheers, cheers, everybody. Oh, fuck. Let's open this up. Yeah. It's a bottle from Stateside. It's got a New York Times best-selling author logo on it. Let's let's drink the shit out of it. Go. Can I get it open? There we go. Oh, back to the old days here. Go back to the old days. Drink right out of the bottle. I love you. Right out of the bottle. Oh. Oh, smooth. Smooth. Nice. Wow. Thank you to Stateside Vodka for putting this on. Uh, Flo, thank you for being on the show, man. Thanks You're for having me. Inspiring guy. Uh, where can everybody find you on social media? Uh, Flo and Doc Roberg on Instagram, on uh, on, on Facebook. Hey, by the way. Uh, it's got, I love saying this because it's so stupid. It's got a little blue check mark. Don't go to the other <laughs> fake yeah. ass fucking websites and, uh, and, and, you know, things. There's humble. All these scammers, they stop sending my wife emails saying I'm trying to, <laughs> just asking you for a dollar. You know what I mean? Make Make sure sure so verified. Much. Make sure it's you verified. Make sure it's verified. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, All no, thank time. you for coming. This is awesome. Yeah. We'll have fun tomorrow. It's amazing Army Navy game and you you're you're gonna minus ten, huh? You're confident in Army. Yeah. Alright. Tough game. Real tough they, game. They always play each other tight. It's gonna rain all day too. Oh, even better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Danthony Danthony Holloway, Flo, Jared Taylor, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>